Okay, hello and welcome. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I think we're going to be continuing on with cata catacombs tonight. I want to say cataclysm. <laughs> That's what I'm used to saying when I start with cata. But it's catacomb. Uh, catacomb 3D. And we're going to continue with the abyss. We played the descent last time, which was kind of like the first foray into uh, making a catacomb 3D game. Uh, but Catacomb 3D The Abyss is some of the first of three refinements on the game which we played last time, I think is, is a way I would sort of phrase it. Um, I'm just reading about it at the moment. So let's see. Uh, if Catacomb 3D The Descent was made by id Software, uh, then the later ones, Abyss... Apocalypse and Armageddon, I think they are, uh, were made by Softdisk, the company which id Software uh, made the Catacomb games for, and uh, Catacomb's really the uh, the Descent was published by Softdisk. So, yes, uh, I think overall they're pretty much mechanically the same, though the engine has had a little bit of an update. Also. I actually have some maps for these uh, levels if I end up getting lost, but we're going to be playing it with Catacomb GL, so I have an auto map anyway. Um, again, the maps aren't that big, so I'm not going to really get have much of a chance to get lost. And I don't think they're that long either, about 20 levels again. So we should be able to finish one of these uh, maybe every session. Prepare to enter the Catacomb. Okay, and I need to... Expand that. There we go. Soft disk publishing production. The Catacomb Abyss 3D. Or the Catacomb 3D Abyss. I don't know. <laughs> One way or the other. And there. You can see it's actually not developed by id Software. The Catacomb Abyss and blah blah blah. Okay. Let's uh get to the game. <laughs> can I have the game pop up please? Oh, <laughs> Windows, you're arguing with me there. There we go, new game. You have to press it on that screen. <laughs> Dare you challenge the great nemesis as what, novice or warrior? Uh, <laughs> I think we get different messages depending on which one we say. I'd like to see both of them. Uh, novice? Ha, another novice to feed my pets. <laughs> you stand before the gate leading into the town cemetery. Night is falling as mournful wails mingle with the sound of your pounding heart. Equipped with your wits and a secret knowledge of magic, you venture forth on your quest to upset the dark schemes of Nemesis, your arch-rival. He's very appropriately named for that. Okay. So, we'll start a new game and we'll play with Warrior because, heck, I can deal with it. Good, I love the taste of Warrior's blood. Same plot. Okay, so you see, things are already looking a, f a fair bit nicer than they were before. Uh, did the ground have texture in the uh, previous one? Or did the ground have a colour in the previous one? The textures on the walls are much more detailed than they were before. And also, I like this. Uh, you can sort of tell that we're outside because the uh, sky's flashing. It's like lightning lighting up the night sky, which is rather nice effect. Um... For what it is. Uh, I guess that will change in later levels, I suppose, if we go inside. But yeah. See some monsters on there. And there's standing sprites. You can see all these tombstones around. Which is pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Mechanics-wise, it's similar to Catacomb 3D The Descent, but there is a number of differences. Uh, we have our fireball attack. Rapid fire as well. However... Gone is the ability to charge up your shot. Uh, we no longer can hold down the fire button to charge up a fireball. You'll also see uh, down the bottom we have apparently the name of the game in the far left. Uh, and the text at the top in the center, the town cemetery, 
Uh, it shows the location which we're in at the moment. Uh, that will change, like in Catacomb 3D, depending on which area of the uh, level we go into. We have our health with the little portrait of... I forget the guy's name. He's a mage. Um, we also have a percentage of health remaining, which is very useful. Uh, the previous one, we just had the... Uh, I'm gesturing at my screen as if you can tell, see that. Uh, we had the um, portrait on the top right and that as it became more skeletized was how much was how we could determine how much health we had left but yeah we actually have a percentage now which makes that easier to tell uh from top to bottom those three icons next to our portrait on the right the three circles are our zappers or our bolts as they were called in previous one uh, zappers you fire with zed next is the nukes or exterminators which is under x and then our potions of healing or cures which is under c uh these are shortcuts you press on the keyboard i think you could also press space bar for healing uh then we have the keys which we can get red keys green keys blue keys and yellow keys uh we had all those different types of keys in the previous game uh it actually keeps track of how many we have there with a the numeric value now and then there's a scroll i think like in the previous game, we could pick up scrolls to get text from them. Um, I don't know whether we'll be able to... Uh, what's it called? Like, read ones which we've gotten... Uh, back again, after we've picked them up. Mm, next to that, on the far right, is the... Uh, sort of auto map, where you can see... It shows, uh, I think, I, I'm not too sure, that, that dot on the map might actually be where the exit is. Uh, the white dot in the center is where we are, and it will also show enemies on the map based on where we are. And you'll see, just notice this, as we step forward here, it will give us some different text. For openers, read the help F1, then collect the zappers and cure potions in this area. Be ready with the control and Z keys as you venture beyond. Okay, let's have a look at this. Play hole for the Catacomb Abyss 3D. Mm, okay, getting started. It's probably going to be pretty much the same. Abyss 3D performs optimally on a hard drive system. Operates best on SIF systems with process speeds of 20 megahertz or better. Operates in 16 color EGA graphics mode only. Like most other complex graphics software, it requires the most of 640k RAM in order to run properly. If you experience difficulty running any part of the game, try one of the following methods to free up more memory. Boot an MS-DOS system floppy instead of your normal disk. You can create a system floppy before by typing format A slash S at the DOS prompt. And various other things. And there's the controls. I'm going to be using the mouse because we're using the Catacomb GL source port again. And uh, you can also apparently use the joystick, if you wished. Note that you'll still need to use all the other keyboard controls to fully operate the game, so you can't map them all to a joystick, I guess. Uh, what's that? F2. Select no sound, PC speaker, or ad lib. It's got support for ad lib? Huh. How about that? I wonder how that makes things different. And uh, we're just going to be getting PC speaker sounds. Unless it does general MIDI. Don't know. Save current game position. Restore a save game position. Calibrate joystick system options. We also don't have any music. Ooh, we've got plot. You defeated your arch rifle Nemesis in a recent adventure into the catacombs. Since his defeat, the blinded minions of Nemesis has erected a mausoleum in his honor east of the town cemetery. Since the mausoleum's erection, a dark cloud has overcast the land, giving rise to unspeakable visions of terror and acts of violence from the forces of Nemesis. The townspeople have once again hired you to perform your feats of wizardry and prowess against what appears to be the work of the villainous nemesis. You will now proceed forward into the town cemetery and beyond, seeking the source of the evil and perhaps uncovering another diabolical scheme of nemesis. They're very determined to spell town with an E. And you just can't keep a good lich down, it seems. I need to find and defeat, destroy his phylactery. Uh, you begin your quest in the town cemetery, a place known for its many sad departures. As you take your first tenuous steps into the dark compound, you reflect on a rumour which you heard in the town. 
It is rumored that beyond the hedges of the Garden of Tears lies a mausoleum erected to the glory of the dark eve of the evil mage Nemesis, your arch rival. One can only imagine what nightmarish terrors lurk in his crypt and in subterranean worlds that lie below its foundations. The sacred scripts speak of an ancient aqueduct system buried beneath the town. The revered fables tell us that the aqueduct leads to such diverse haunts as the orc mines, the lair of the trolls, the demon's inferno, and the fearful battleground of the titans. The druids speak emphatically about a coven of mages, which has risen to the call of Nemesis to enslave and torture the inhabitants of the abyss. These grim creepers of esoteric ways guard the path which leads to the inner sanctum of Nemesis and to the cer certain ways of pain. So venture forth with courage and resolve. Study the information provided you in these pages so that you might survive the rigors of the Catacomb Abyss 3D. Ooh, okay. Though it's very, actually very easy to get started playing in the Abyss, your adventuring, ple your adventuring pleasure can be enhanced if you gain an understanding of some of the many subtle features that are woven into the game's fabric. <laughs> Layering it on a bit thick there. Uh, this came out in... 92, perhaps? Is it? Let me have a look. Uh, since the first one, I think, came out in 91... Uh, doesn't actually have the uh day the uh years when it was released on Wikipedia. So I would imagine they're all released relatively soon after one another. Yeah, it just lists the release date of the first game. It doesn't list the uh release date of Abyss Armageddon and Apocalypse. Oh, well. Uh, it's advisable to reread the following information as you gain more experience on playing the Catacomb Abyss 3D. The lower portion of the screen. Yes, yes, we've gone over that. Uh, there is actually something else here. Uh, the Crystal Sphere, which displays your enemies in your direction of view. That's the auto map. The Crown of Gems, which will hold the gems you find. Yes, yeah, there's these gems to find. I don't actually know what they do. I think they enhance the uh, auto map. Learn quickly to monitor your character's health status. When it drops close to 0%, you should use a cure potion to restore to 100 Screen border will flash red whenever you have suffered damage. The screen border will flash yellow whenever one of your stray magic missiles have destroyed a valuable bonus item, such as a chest, cure potion, zapper, or exterminator. This is something I tried to do in uh, Catacomb 3 Deeds and Descent, but it's not actually a thing in that one. But it's in this one. We can destroy uh, pick up -able items by shooting them. So I have to be careful in that regard. Hmm. Collect and use the many zappers, exterminators, and gearing potions hidden in the world. You will find scrolls which will offer your, you clues to your quest. Once found, a scroll can be reread at any time by pressing the appropriate number key related to the scroll. There exists a few rare crystal hourglasses, which when activated will, by you will cause time to stop for a short while, allowing you to explore your environs safely, as well as allowing you to lay traps for your opponents. More later. Uh, you can shoot magic missiles, zappers will shoot a stream, exterminators will shoot a pattern of them in a circular pattern around you. But yeah, you can destroy objects of value if you're not careful. Uh, when attacking your opponent appears, to back up and run away, get more distance, yeah. Kite them! Learn to interpret the crystal sphere. You must find the five magic gems which fit into the base of the sphere. Once the gem is in its place at the base, it will reveal the locations of certain creatures of the abyss. You will learn to recognize the type of opponent hiding nearby by the color of its dot on the sphere display. The top of the crystal sphere always displays those opponents which are in front of you, in the direction which you are facing. Conversely, the bottom of the sphere points to the direction directly behind you, and so on for left and right. Uh, the crystal hourglass hovers above the ground in certain rare and exotic places within the abyss, vibrating in synchronicity with the pulse of time. <laughs> Touching a crystal hourglass disrupts the pulse of time, effectively freezing in place all objects and events in the world allow around you for a limited duration. Uh, you'll be able to explore the world around you. Actually, plant exterminators and zappers in the path of an advancing opponent, ready to activate when time resumes its normal pace. Hey, we can just place a whole bunch of magic missiles to hit the enemy all at once. Time disruption will revert to normal when 100 grains of the sands of time has fallen. This is actually rather interesting considering another game which I bought recently. 
When you find one of the rare hourglasses, save the current position of the game before proceeding to experiment with a time-frozen world. I guess once we pick them up, it's used automatically. We can't carry it around with us. Uh, save often. You can delete all the saves. Some weakened walls in the world can be exploded by a direct hit from a magic missile. Yes, there's the uh, secret walls again. There's no push walls in this yet, so it's all... Anything hidden is hidden by destructible walls. Yeah, observe the direction opponents approach from. They may be protecting something of value in that direction. And so on and so forth. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's make a save. New save. Uh, catacomb 1. There we go. That's a bit piercing. <laughs> okay, let's actually get on with this. Pick up a health potion and a zapper. You pick up this chest and you'll see, unlike in uh, the descent, it actually gives us items rather than points. We don't actually have a point system in this game, so all the chests will give us zappers, nukes, and health potions. And there's a zombie. I like the sprites in this. They're very, ni they're very nice. Got a little bit of animation to them and they fall into a jumble of body parts. And you actually see it, like, rising up under the ground over there. Pretty cool. Okay. And you can hear our footsteps as well. Weakened walls. We can destroy that and go into here. I actually have done this level already in my testing. The Gravedigger keeps the key to the garden with his pet bats. Okay. And we can actually read that again by pressing 1. Okay. Oh! Another zombie. And there's a bat. Destroy that and... Go away! <laughs> Sneaking up behind me. There's another zapper. And we got a green key. Oh! A bat. Don't miss the purple gem in this region. Yeah, okay. There we go. And just to show this. So yeah, if you shoot it, it will explode. That is the same for chests and uh, health potions and nukes, I would imagine. Let's go over this way. Also, since we're playing G GL Catacomb DL, we can uh, look at an auto map. So we can see whether there's anything hidden. It also shows all the little messages which were popping up on the screen. There we go. Get this red key. And this chest. Okay. Ah! Get out of here. I do like those zombies. They look neat. They do a good job with the colour palette. I guess they've got a few more colours than they did in the previous game. Hello, welcome, welcome. I have extremely vague memories of seeing a game at a computer store when you were three or so and you think it was this. I never have played this before, um, aside from my testing. I don't think I ever saw uh, footage or like a shareware version of this in the stores. Um, so, yeah, which is kind of odd, come to think of it. You'd have thought it would be more widely distributed. Hm. I don't know. <laughs> Use a red key. Oh. There's one of those purple gems. I really don't think this looks too bad, considering it was like... 92? 93, perhaps? Ah! Color palettes may be a little limited, but... There we go. Pick up that. 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 And we pick up that gem. So apparently these gems allow us to see, like, more monster... Like, more monster types on the map, but, uh... Yeah, I don't know exactly how it's have changed having picked up that one. Because one of those lifelong, what the hell was that game thing? Yeah, I know that. You're like, I have vague memories of seeing you or playing a game at some point, but I just can't remember what it was. And it is extremely difficult to search for a game when you have only like the vaguest of memories to go on. 
have a few games like that and I just have no idea what they would be. Okay. I guess when this game came out... Oh, hello. Ooh, we're down to 28%. <laughs> Not good for the first level. Eh, yeah, let's heal up. I like he becomes increasingly disheveled as he, uh, takes damage. Yeah. It'd be neat if they made a little roar noise or something when they popped up out of the gr when they popped up out of the ground. There we go. Okay. Get that bat. Get that bat. I think those are the same as in the original one. There's a whole bunch of bats in here. Grave digger storage. Did say he had a lot of pet bats. Ankle deep in guado. Lovely. Pick up those. I guess... What was I saying? I guess the reason why I never really saw this one distributed is because it wasn't until, like, Wolfenstein 3D that... It sort of became like really worth the effort. This wasn't that. that it wasn't massively popular, so it was just sort of like, oh, that's neat, I guess. Um, at least I don't really remember. Ninety two is, uh, you know, a bit. It's kind of before I really started paying attention to that type of stuff. Um, but. Like, even magazines I was reading, they, it was like Wolfenstein 3D. We didn't really mention games like this. Just because it was so much of a... So much more of an advancement in terms of things. And also, another game which was out around the same time as this, Ultima Underworld, that looked much better and had a uh, more impressive engine. Though greater system requirements because of that because it actually had a 3d environment with like multiple levels and i do mean to play that at some point i have played maybe about half of it i haven't finished it um yeah let's go through there ultimate underworld though is a lot slower paced than uh wolfenstein 3d despite its more impressive engine Hello, welcome, welcome. This is more me. It is. <laughs> Playing <laughs> stupidly old games. Uh, <laughs> I like seeing where things come from. Oh, let's pick this up. No, oh, hey. Oh, ah! It's like ghost thingies. I hope people are doing well. Get out of here. Also, I was watching some of your uh, continued playthrough of um, whoop. your uh, playthrough of Grim Dawn. River God, I'm glad that you're still enjoying that game. I think I was up to. Oop. You're dealing with a whole bunch of the uh, giant insects out of home... Homestead? Something like that? Okay, let's see. Oh, more zombies. Enemy counter this is a lot higher than the previous game. It kind of looks like all the zombies are giving me thumbs up. <laughs> They're like, good job, you killed me. Again. It's just like a field of thumbs up. These walls I can destroy? Yes. The ones without vines on I can destroy. I 
I'm kind of surprised the game doesn't have any music in it, but um, the previous game only had the one soundtrack. And that was from Commander Keen. So maybe they just didn't have a musician on hand. What's it say? A garden of tears to expose your fears. The field of size. Okay. You can also see what our current, uh, like, action is at the moment in the, in the bottom center. If we're just standing still, it's viewing. If we're moving forward, it's advancing. If we're walking back, it's retreating. Whenever we shoot this magic missile, and you get sidestepping when you're strafing. Okay. Uh, where do we need to go? How about down there? It'd be nice if the auto map actually laid, like, the walls on it. Oop. I didn't mean to use that, but okay. Are you stuck behind those? Ah! Okay, get that, and get the chest. Forgotten storage room. There's a zombie on the other side of that wall. Okay. And I think it's raining outside. It's just been really cold here for the last few days. And the heating keeps turning off, so I have to keep going outside to reset it, which is rather annoying. Not sure what the problem with it is. It's just not very well insulated from the uh, wind or something, I guess. How's the volume was this? How's the volume was this? I know that the uh, sound effects are rather jabby in the uh, ears, so I don't want it to be too loud and uh, piercing, since you're going to be hearing this an awful lot. I could turn it down a bit if people are getting their ears blasted out, that's perfectly fine. Get some more things. Uh, let's see. Yeah, actually a few walls up there. Could destroy those. Again, there's no... It isn't too high, I could just hear the crunch. That's good. <clears throat> I know even at the time, like, PC speaker was, uh... People knew if you were playing a game. <laughs> Entire neighborhood would probably know. No volume control! It's either full blast or no nothing. There we go. Not like all these monsters on the walls. Uh. Yeah, okay. Anything down there? I think we've actually gone everywhere around here. Yeah. We could just go back. Can I go back to the previous area? The door is blocked. Blocked entrance from the cemetery. I guess we can't actually retreat. The only way f is forward. Okay, entrance to Mausoleum Grounds. Yep. I wonder if this game's going to have the uh, multiple paths that the descent had. Okay, we'll make a save too. <clears throat> there we go. Oop. Zombies. Oh, you're stuck behind the uh, <laughs> items.
It's interesting, actually, that they can't move through the, uh, items. Are uh, there unlimited zombies? Um, combos? And an autocorrect change to that. Uh, zombies? I don't think so. I think there is a limited number of enemies in the level. Um, I don't think they respawn. Does that? There's no, like, the game doesn't keep track of how many enemies are in an area or how many secrets there are, so I'm not going to bother trying to get 100% secrets or enemies killed because I don't know. Whoop. There's another enemy. It's a skeleton. <laughs> Ooh, heck. Take a fair bit more damage. There we go. Hey, Skeleton. He looks so sad when you shoot him. Whoa. Stun locking enemies is still a thing in this. I do kind of miss them charging up the uh, fireball, but I didn't use that in the descent. It took too long and it didn't do enough damage to uh, justify charging up the shot. It was just better to uh, spam the attack button, so I guess that's why they removed it. If it had like an area of effect attack on it, that would be useful. And again, maybe that would be more than the engine could do at the time. out of here. I think this game actually has uh, maps built into it. If we look at hints and solutions, I think this shows maps of the areas and the monsters and items that can be found. Yeah, here's the first level, the town cemetery. I mean, we've got an auto map anyway, so. <laughs> oh no, I'm cheating. Uh, but yeah, you can see like where you come in on the map where the items are located. I can make sure to be able to find all of those purple gems. And what enemies are on the map. There's the zombies and the bats. The same for the Garden of Tears, the area which we were in before. So what? It doesn't say how many enemies are in the map, are on the level, as well as how many there are. Maybe they keep respawning. Don't actually know. Anyway, we won't, we won't look at this screen. At this level. Graves of sacrificial offerings. Someone's attacking me. Get out of here. They do like appearing behind you. I guess the sporting is based on like triggers you're walking over. Someone was going nuts thinking of names for every hallway. Yeah, I rather like it that like each area has a little description attached to it. Corridors of death. It just makes everything seem like overly dramatic. Welcome to the larger of perpetual I don't know, mustiness. Though I can't joke about that because in Raven Lost Strad's possession there was actually the Larder of Ill Omen or something like that in it, so... Wow. It's a real problem in this game getting surrounded. It's actually harder than uh, the descent is, that's good to know. The descent I kind of breezed through. I'm probably not going to be able to do that in this. Nothing there. Don't miss the yellow gem in this region. Okay. It's nice that the game actually sort of mentions to you, hey, there's an important item in here. Which you might want to look for. A 
forgotten musty corridors. Ooh, I gotta be careful. There's some health potions behind you. There we go. Can I grab those? Good. And it actually is keeping track of how many uh, items we have beyond, like, 10. We have 55 zappers. I should probably use some of them. <laughs> Gonna go through the entire game and I'm not going to use any of them. Hmm... Any other areas which I missed? Can't get into that block there, can I? No. Well, maybe I can. Maybe I can destroy some of these windows or something and open a path. I have to go around. Again, I like the, uh, the uh, flashing of the sky up there. For lightning. Is neat. What do these have all them? Oh, I think... Isn't that, um... Isn't that the, uh, standard galactic alphabet from Commander Keen on it? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, there we go. Uh, let me just, uh... Let's see. It's probably just got R.I.P. on it, but... Let me have a look and see. Uh... Yeah, what's that first one? Like an N? Maybe? No. It's not R. Uh, what's the second one? Like a dot with a little dash underneath it. Yeah, maybe they're just symbols. I don't seem to be able to really match it up with anything. The last one's just a line, so... Yeah. Looks a little bit like it, but maybe it's nothing. Where's this yellow gem? Am I missing a part of the map? What's the hint thing say? Yeah, okay. It is in there. I was thinking it was like in that area, but I thought that was an exit door. I guess there's two exit doors. Okay, if I... Save again. Yep. There we go. And go in. There we go. So you use the key and the uh, door disappears. There. Yeah. No. Leave me alone. There we go. Okay, we got the second gem. We can go around and exit the level then, I think. Dedicated to Nemesis and his great evil. And to his great evil. <laughs> Okay. Yep. You have arrived at the main floor of the mausoleum. Hey, they've even got portraits of him in here. 
Oh, we can't destroy them? Ooh. There was a new enemy over there too. Oh, there's one. It's one of those mage dudes. I guess they throw fireballs at me again. Yeah, I don't want to leave. I keep pressing space to remove the message, but... I just end up healing myself. Get out of here. Okay, they've introduced ranged enemies a lot more, a lot earlier. There we go. Can I destroy that? No. I can destroy that. Meditation chamber. Okay. Can I destroy these ones? No. What that? Mausoleum of Nemesis. Okay. Actually, use the zapper. Though, again, it does kind of feel like the zapper just does what I can do just spit out a huge amount of fireballs. There we go. Can I destroy any of these? Nope. Hello, welcome, welcome. behind there. <laughs> Majors! Get out of here. Go. Oh look, they've actually got a texture for descending into a deeper level. <laughs> you can even see the door at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh no! I shot it and re released skeletons. Can I destroy all of them and release heaps of skeletons? Oh, there's mages behind that one. Ooh, the gem. The place of enchanted cubes. Okay. <laughs> Am I was like, am I shooting these and it's summoning creatures or something? Oh, it's actually chests in that one. Oh, I actually got both of those. There we go. Let me get this. Fireball takes up half my screen for like a frame or two. Yeah, it's like, it appears right in front of me. I don't... I, I don't actually remember whether that's in the base game or part of the uh, source port. It was like that in the descent as well. It could stand to be a, to appear from the character like a bit lower down rather than just from the center of your view. Oh well. You can see the stream of fireballs are spitting out on the auto map. I guess they're magic missiles, but... Ah! Here we go. I do like carrying these potions around with me. It's nice. I like having an inventory. Can't get rid of those, can I? No. Uh, okay.
Is there something over the other side? Go and have a look at there. Uh, can I get there by going? Yep. Go. There we go. Got that. The other chest. Hmm. Is that everything now? I think so. Yeah, we just have to go down to the next level. Let's make a save again. Okay. Yep. You have arrived at the crypt of Nemesis the Undead. He's got pentagrams on the walls. What's that scroll say? Sacrificial altar holds the key to the region below the crypt. Okay. Front room of the crypt of the undead. Couldn't you say foyer? Yeah. Nuke. No, oh, I destroyed a potion over there. Damn it. Oh well. My rapid fireball flinging with a bandit is uh, costing me. There we go. Anything in these little nooks? Nope. All of bones. Have a lot of skeletons? Hidden chambers. Ooh, I think there's some. Yep. Some things appearing behind me. Where'd you come from? Can you move through walls? Area behind the altar room. Okay. Descent to the den of zombies. Again, it would be neat if the enemies made little noises when they uh, were moving around or something. Maybe that would be just audio overload, though. I don't want to have sound effects playing constantly. Okay, and we've got to go over the other side, so we'll head over there. Can I destroy this? I can. Oh, I see. They're doing the whole sort of two different textures for the walls based on which direction you're looking at again in this one. Like in the Catacombs to Descent. But rather than having, like, the walls look darker on one side than the other, they actually have changed the hue of them. I haven't done it with that. Hmm. Oh. 
There we go. I don't think the zappers actually deal more damage than my normal fireballs. Need to check my six more. I keep getting backstabbed. Yeah. They sneak up on me. I'm not used to like having to look at an auto map to uh, know if there's enemies behind me. It's because it's like Wolfenstein 3D. The enemies are always in front of me because I clear out a room before I head into it. But in this, it's very much you go to you go forward. Enemies don't just spawn in front of you. They spawn behind you. It's rather tricky. I just have to pay. I have to pay better attention. Like, I have no idea where you came from. Is it like a one of those ghost demon thingies over there? Going to pop through the wall? Get again! Little bugger snuck up on me. go. Oh, and it leads back over there. Okay. Just shoot all the walls. There we go. Hey, there's an altar! <laughs> Neat! They've actually got a little uh, texture for it. It was an altar room in the uh, catacomb, the two, catacomb, the descent. But that was just like a brick colored, a brick colored, uh, or brick textured two blocks next to each other. They didn't actually have like a little texture on the wall. <laughs> Can I destroy it? No. Get out of here. And you. Now, I wonder if that's my max number of zappers. Can I have 99, but no more? Uh, I think that's about it on this level. I've got the key. And this actually tells me what key I need for the door, because up there it's got a red square over the top of the uh, exit. Though it seems like, from what I've seen so far, the red key is always the one you need to get to the next level. Okay. Save, and we'll continue. Yep. <laughs> Dead of zombies. There's grass down here. Who wants to bet that there's going to be a lot of zombies? Oh, hey! Dirt textures! Neat! Oh, did that skeleton pop out of the wall? There was like a skull on the wall there. That's cool. I think there was, there was like a little skeleton there, but... Can I do something with this? Oh, I can walk through that! Hey! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> they pop out of the walls! That's cool. Now line up one after the other. Okay, I know there's one more of you in here. There we go. Can I change the sound? 
It says it's actually on ad lib. What's PC speaker? Oof. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go with ad lib. That's the better option. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> maybe a PC speaker will sound better. <laughs> uh, how foolish of me. I have heard good soundtracks on PC speaker, as odd as that sounds. I recommend listening to the, um, it, th there's very few. The soundtrack for Ski or Die is very good, uh, done by Rod, Rob Hubbard, so you'd expect it to be very good. Um... There's also a PC speaker version of the Secret of Monkey Island and Monkey Island 2 themes, which are very good considering it can only do a single wave. Or a sing like a, the, the PC speaker had only a single channel, so. They do an admirable job of having a complex, uh, like a complex arrangement of tunes and the uh, ski or die soundtrack is cool because it's it, it it does like a sort of like a guitar st a guitar style was the uh single was the single square wave you think loom has some good pc speaker music i don't think i've heard that one i think loom for its soundtrack is uses whole bunch of music from uh swan lake but it would be interesting to hear the uh pc speaker rendition of those i have played through loom that's an enjoyable game i, r I rather like it even if it's uh it's not what you'd expect from an adventure game but i think it works quite well for what it was trying to do it's a lot more i don't know about the atmosphere and story than like real puzzle solving, but the puzzles are pretty good in it too. Can I do anything with you? Mr. Bones. Oh, okay. What's to say? A moldy and musty room. The smell of death. Crumbling walls. Chamber of good things. <laughs> Maybe Nemesis is the one which came up with all these right, names for the rooms. Over here will be the musty... Chamber of Dirt. This will be the Hall of the Undead, and this will be the Chamber of Good Things. I guess Nemesis sounds like Skeletor. The default, <laughs> default voice for any skeleton. Bone piles. These vortexes actually sort of remind me a bit of um, Monster Bash. Maybe it's just a whole graveyard theme to it. Oh, I saw that. That skull appeared in the wall there. It's gonna pop out. There you go. You take it back after looking it up, it's pretty intense. <laughs> the loom soundtrack from PC Speaker. I think intense is a good way to describe anything on the PC speaker, but, um... Yeah, it's sort of... It, it has to do a lot... I think a good soundtrack on a PC speaker, it's like you have to know what... You have to know what to include or what to omit. Because <laughs> you've... As I said, you can only have one sound going at a time, so... Secret of Monkey Island does a good job with it because it tries to do a little bit of like it like alternates between two different notes to try and get like us to get like two tracks going at the same time and it works pretty well. Monkey Island 2 it goes it, it's it doesn't work as well because that one's a lot more complicated. Still does a pretty good effort but eh. Oh, my God. 
Oh, I destroyed a chest, did I? Well, yeah, wonderful. I think Ski or Dies worked well also because it was a guitar solo, so. Nope. Damn it! Haunt of Skeletons. Did I destroy any of these walls? No. Okay. Cramped Corridor. Uh, I do have the green key, so I could go through that door now. Yeah, okay. Let's go through there. <laughs> you use a green key. Access a subterranean vault. Okay. Oh, and I use a yellow key for that one. Okay, you don't use the red key to exit all the levels. Enter chamber to the subterranean vault. Get out of here. I am liking this one a lot more. It feels like you're taking on an evil horde more than the descent. Where it was just sort of... The enemy count was a lot lower, so it just felt... I don't know. You're going through just like a... Uh... <laughs> like a... Uh... Patrol of uh, evil beings instead of a uh, army. The one of souls plunges into the ancient aqueduct. Okay. Oh, I can destroy those. Oh, hey, that's a new enemy. Oh, he doesn't get sunlocked. He actually keeps moving. That's cheating. Oh, and he melts. Oh, he's like the uh, red demons from The Descent, except he's blue. Takes a lot of shots. I was going to say a bit of a shortcoming in this game is pretty much like the only way you can really make the enemies dif more difficult is by giving them more health. But that blue demon does show that they've thought about that and they've come up with a way to make them a bit more challenging by having them not just stand still when you stun lock them. It'd be interesting to have enemies which like phase in and out and sometimes your fireballs move through them. Thinking of the uh, wizards or mages or whatever they're called from Heretic, which do that. I don't know whether you could change the state of a creature like that, though. There's a skeleton over there? Yeah, it was. Oh, there's actually a bunch of them. Also, I like how the uh, textures on the walls, they sort of 
merge into the black of the roof. That's nice. I think uh, Wolfenstein 3D did that in some, one of the levels in uh, Spirit of Destiny. And it's a neat way to make it just feel like... It, it hides the fact that there's no roof texture. It's just sort of, you know, oh, it's too dark to see. Rather than just being, yeah, the sky's black and the walls, you know, are just completely square. And the red they chose for the alternate colour for the walls is a rather nice one as well. It does make the walls look like they're made out of gore, but <laughs> I guess that's kind of appropriate. It's not a overly bright red either, so it sort of works well with the brown. It doesn't make it look too out of place. Okay. Can I destroy any of these? There we go. Twisted Passages of Death. I, I think I've got, yeah, I've got Max uh, Zappers and uh, Nukes. So if I pick up any more, it doesn't go past 100. Okay, so I should start using them so I can, you know, make use of the ones which I'm picking up. They emerged on the walls. Coming out of the goddamn walls. I do like that. It's neat. That wasn't something they did in the descent. I wonder if that's something you could do with Wolfenstein 3D. Hmm. Because it's like the walls animated slightly. I've seen the skeletons pop up on the walls before they uh, pop oh. out of them. Get out of here. Go. What's in here? Oh, look, a chest. I guess some potions? Nope. <laughs> we just, like, open it up. It's got more zappers and exterminators in it, and we just... We just toss them. Oh, it's a well. Are we gonna have to descend from descend down the well? The well of souls. What does it say about it? Plunges into the ancient aqueduct. Well, I guess we do have to go down the well. There's another one of those demons. Come on. I don't want to find out how much health you deal. Or damage you deal. Blub. Anything I missed around here? South Tunnels of Gloom. I don't think so. Let's jump down here. You've arrived at the ancient aqueduct. Hey, I've actually got animated water. Cool. And the walls are animated too. The textures on the walls are animated. Neat. What's the... Oh! <laughs> cool. It's like... Hiding under the water until you get near, and then he pops back up again. Get out of here. Blub. There we go. 
<laughs> it actually looks like they're like ankle deep in the water too. So instead of like blending the uh, roof into the black texture for the ceiling, it's blending the floor into the blue for the walls. And uh, and then they have like the sprite looking like a little puddle. I guess it's got elf ring on it so that it looks blue. And then, yeah, it just looks like the enemies emerging from the water. Clever. Oh look, the walls are animated. It explodes the walls like I don't care. <laughs> ah, get rid of them. Can I shoot you while you're underwater? No, I can't. I actually have to wait for the uh, water troll to pop out of the uh, water. The... <laughs> don't miss the blue gem in this region. These guys look like the Hulk. Like the blue Hulk. Was there a blue Hulk? I know there was a grey one. Grey one. Hey, get back here. There we go. It even actually makes me feel like I'm sitting half in the water. You know what would have sold it even better? If for this level, uh, they changed the sound effect for your walking. So instead of the tap, 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 which it was playing in the other levels, it had like a, I don't know, like a bloop noise or something. It sounded like you were wading through the water. I'm sure they'll get right on that. <laughs> Let's uh, wait for you to pop out here. There we go. I wonder if they heal when they go back underwater. You can actually see the edges of the uh, walls there. Very vague, very slightly. Uh, in where my guy's thumb is. Just, just there. That might be just a thing to do with the uh, source port though. Hey, a blue gem. Okay. Mm. Well, we got the blue gem. There's a chest over there too. Go over there and have a look. Get more healing potions. I really need to use my my items more. <laughs> I've got so many of them. They do give you a lot, though. Like what? I should use two zappers on every enemy? Uh... I should go... Back to that room, so I need to go over this way. That way! There we go. Come on. There we go. Behind here. Another troll. He's trapped behind the chests. 
Yeah, you see how many zappers it gave me? <laughs> it's like four or five in a single chest. Blah! I just blow that chest up. I can't be bothered picking it up. I mean, they could give me potions. Part of this is, of course, because I'm using a mouse. It's just easier to react to things than using the keyboard. I mean, look at the turn rate for the keyboard compared to the mouse. And there's no running in this either, so... No, I can't actually strafe by pressing Alt. How about that? Come on. Yeah. Did this have support for the mouse? Uh, this is going to be the update and menu for the source port, so I don't actually know. Mana bar disabled. Enabled. What's that do? Oh, interesting. Is that a feature in the base game? It actually prevents you from spamming fireballs if you have that on. You have to wait for your uh, shots to charge up again. Cond conduit to the orc mines. Uh, there's that over there. I'll open up that area as well if I get there. Okay, so I have to go through here, around, and up this way. Get over here. These games are quite short, I think. They've only got like 20 levels in them. I'll probably try and finish it tonight. I don't think it's really worth like saving and continuing it next time. Yes, I want to. The Orc Mines. They've got a lot of text, a lot of different textures for levels in it. Oh, <laughs> the skeleton emerged. Oh, hey, there's one of those orcs from the first game. Though I kept calling them goblins. They still look more like goblins to me than orcs, but what do I know? But. Okay. You need a green key for the troll's gate access. Okay. There's a scroll over there. What's this say? Mind the treasures of the orcs and find a passage to the troll's lair. Okay. Is there going to be light gems in the walls? We have to shoot the skeletons in the walls again. Okay. What? Do you have a longer range to attack or something? Looked like they were trying to hit me from 
further away than they would be able to. Maybe they have a longer range attack because they're equipped with a spear? Hmm. Hello, skeleton. Sneaking up behind me. Nothing in there, nothing in there. Hmm. Hey, the green key! There's another green key over there as well. I can take that one. There we go. Uh, anything in these? No, doesn't look like it. Yeah, okay. Kinda looks like something's there. Yeah, hey! Maybe nukes do deal more damage. It actually killed that guy in one shot. Yeah, pop around the corner. Eh, maybe. Hey, we have all the gems now. And we have max everything. Okay. Yeah, there's a green door over there. Yeah, let's just head back over there. Except health. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if I use if I healed myself, I would actually run out of a, uh, would actually go below max healing potions. No, hey, there we go. Ah, damn it! It was short lived, but we had max everything. Then a skeleton snuck up on me. Collapsed tunnels. Hey, that's neat. It's like a we're uncovering a. Uh, stone wall. This is like mining in uh, Dungeon Keeper. I'm kind of surprised actually. I, I wonder whether they would do a level where it's like just solid bricks and you have to mine your way through them. Like one block at a time. My hubris ruined me. <laughs> it was true. Ah. Uh. My damn hubris. <laughs> Use the green key. Get overconfident. What do I get? A skeleton backstabbing me. It's terrible. You think the skeleton's on your side because it does so much to support you, but then, uh, when you least expect it, it turns on you and. Just causes you no end to pain. <laughs> there are a whole bunch of chests and we're just like, nah, I don't need any of this. I think I actually have everything around here. Yep. Let's go down. I need a green key. Do I? Did I not have two green tea? Two green keys? I used one for the door there. I used one for the door there. I have to find another green key somewhere? There is a room over there, it looks like. Let's have a look. And I did see that option in the menu for, like, 
uh, you know, protection against soft locking. I don't know what that means. I hope it's not related to keys. There's a green key. There we go. Now we have max everything. Okay. And we have to go through here. Yep. There we go. And over this way. Make a save. And go down. You have arrived at the lair of the trolls. I wonder what enemies are in here. Orcs! Easy caverns. Oh hey! There's the trolls. It'd be better if some of the enemies like orcs had a... Uh... How much did you hit me for? Like eight, eight damage? If something like the orcs had bows or something. We had the mages with ranged attacks. Seems like maybe they didn't want to do too many... What projectiles flying at you? Hey, that's one of those, um, uh, hourglasses. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so there's a bunch of dudes back there. There's actually two hourglasses. Pick that up. Pick those up. Yeah, they freeze in place. Haha. <laughs> That's rather cool. I like that. I'll use another one. Just 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 for good measure. It's actually got a countdown sound too. BAM! <laughs> Neat! I like that. I wonder how many projectiles the game could remember in the uh base version of it. I'm guessing the source ports up that quite a bit. Prepare yourself for the brutish troll and fear the demon's wrath that follows. Okay. Ah, oh, there's a torch on the wall back there. It's actually animated too. I can stun lock those guys. They like keep moving towards me. But I'm stun locking him and he can't actually hit me. You'd think that the trolls, when you kill them, would have more blood on their texture, or on their uh, defeat sprite. I mean, the uh, orcs do, but the orcs use the same sprite as from uh, the previous game, so. And I think the trolls are new, I think. What was that trolls in um The Descent? Anyway, maybe everything doesn't have to just, just collapse into a pile of blood and guts. 
Maybe they're just knocked out, they're regenerating. Okay. Bunch of chests. The Gallery of Horror. Okay, what's this? Entry to torture chamber. <laughs> I think that's enough. Can I actually hit you with these if I get right up close to you? No. Actually, where did my fireballs from there go? Oh, maybe there is a limit on how many I can cast. Yeah, I guess there is a limit to how many fireballs I can launch during the frozen time. I need to get a... Oh, that's a yellow key door. I thought it would be a red. I mean, the door's red. Excuse me, I'll just grab those and let you out. go. Anything else around here? Yeah, there's something. There. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. We got the key, let's go to the exit. Yep. <laughs> Demon's Inferno. Ooh, the walls are animated again. Yeah, I don't really like that. All the pulsating walls. Jesus takes a lot of shots. The fire breathing walls of hell. The fiery paths to hell. Oh, there goes that chest. And that one. A 
Approach to the demon's haunt. Are you, like, clawing at the air, or are you trying to fire fireballs at me? No, it just looks like you're clawing at the air. Oh, hello. Uh, launch all the fireballs. Wow, how many of the how many of you are there? <sighs> Quite a few of you, okay? Ow! Wow, you hurt. As you should. I think he dealt like 15% of my health in one hit. There we go. Give me more zappers. Uh. Yeah, okay, let's go around here because I think this is destructible there we go And I still kind of feel like the zappers and exterminators should deal more damage. I just feel if you're surrounded and you're going to be relying on nukes to get out of that situation. Since they don't deal that much more damage, it seems, if any, more than... Uh, your basic fireballs, you're gonna to have to use a lot of them, and you're like only hitting each enemy with a single fireball. So, you're seeing how many fireballs I'm having to hit these guys with. I don't think you're gonna be able to fire enough nukes to get out of being surrounded before you're killed. I should actually count how many shots it takes to kill one of those things. It feels like, like, 40 or something. One, two, three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Okay, I think that took about 50 shots.
Which I think zappers fire... 10 shots? So it would take five zappers to kill one? I think I shot something. There. Just getting a little cramped. Yeah, you can actually trail them behind you. <laughs> I think that's all the ones which you can shoot. Ugh. Hourglass is good just for a bit of a rest. They don't know what's going to hit them. There we go. Even with all that, that wasn't enough to kill one of them. I need a yellow key. The way to the battleground. Okay. There's an area back there. The way to certain peril. Oh, there's actually a demon back there too. Have you seen what I've done with all the other demons? Do you want to join their fate? Too late. You had no choice. Welcome, welcome. You're a simple man. You see Catacombs 3D and you click. I can't imagine that you'd be clicking too often. <laughs> but, hello. I'm enjoying my playthrough of this. As repetitive as it is. I mean, you know, Wolfenstein 3D is a more enjoyable game because it varies things, and that's already kind of repetitive, so. But it's neat. I like what they've done with some of these things. It's got its own charm to it. And the animated textures on, on the walls. I'm surprised they didn't do that in Wolfenstein 3D. Okay, oh hello.
I think I'm just going to leave that hourglass. I don't want to have to wait around for like a minute, minute and a half for it to run out again. Or like a minute? It did feel like a minute and a half. It goes by a bit too quickly. There we go. The rate of clicking is pretty low, unlike when you're playing on the higher difficulties. We are playing on warrior difficulties, so. Surprised I aren't using more zappers for some of those tanky enemies. I am every now and then. I find that my firing rate when I click the mouse is about as same as a uh, zapper. Do you know if zappers and nukes deal more damage than normal magic missiles? I don't seem to. Also, I'm playing this with a uh, source port called Cataclysm, uh, Catacomb GL. That's why I have the auto map. Uh, hang on. Actually, let me provide a link to that for people if they wish to play it themselves. Uh, it is in beta, so it's not completely finished. But, uh, it seems it's, you know, seems to work fine for a playthrough. Um, so far. I think the last version came out on 27th of April. Here we go. This looks as smooth as EC Wolf. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it also allows you to play the widescreen and so on. So, it's rather neat. The link I gave is to a GitHub uh, page since it doesn't really have a link outside of that. As I said, it mentions it's still in beta. I have seen other videos of people playing with it on YouTube. So, developers done a good job with it, I think. Does it work for Catacomb 3D Apocalypse and Armageddon? I believe so. I have played through uh, Catacomb 3D The Descent before with this, and that was perfectly fine. Um, and I think it does also work for Apocalypse and Armageddon. From the... Uh, from what the developer said of it, um, I think it's possible to play through them all. It might not be 100% accurate to the original game, but I haven't played these games before, so I don't know what exactly would be different. I can't imagine too much. All the, all the basics seem to be there anyway. Uh, let's see. Did we get a key from there? No, we didn't. I'll look for the key. Up there? Oh, there's a key. In the hidden treasure room. Okay. You like how the area tiles are actually on the map. Yeah, it's useful. It's like in um, EC Wolf, which did a similar thing with that. I would like the option to zoom out on the map. That was something in EC Wolf. I don't think I have the option to do that in this. That'd be nice if it was added. Okay, let's get that key. And we'll just open up all these chests and stomp on their contents because we don't need them. Uh, and we need to go all the way down there. I do like the graphical improvements this one's done over The Descent. Though, I have to say, I did like how The Descent had kind of a uh, non-linear uh, design to its levels. It was like a hub area which you could go to four different levels from. You had to find the proper way forward in one of them. And uh, some other levels have portals which actually sent you back there. This doesn't seem to do that. <laughs> you arrived at the battleground of the Titans. Okay, and let's save. Catacomb 4. There we go. Certainly helps with spotting keys you missed if they blend into the war textures. It made your freaking day. Well, I'm glad to provide it. I've sort of stumbled upon it, uh, stumbled upon it by luck, because just, I just looked in Google for, like, Catacombs source port, and hey, there it was. The keys to your salvation lie in the grips of death. It's going to be surrounded by skeletons? Oh, hello. Trolls and demons. 
You will need the um, copies of the games to uh, use in the source port, but that's easy enough to get. Because, uh, well, I'm running it using the versions I got from GOG. So, it worked fine. I think the uh, source port actually automatically searches for the install locations um, from having installed them from GOG. So, you don't have to like link it to them if you've installed it from GOG. It will find them automatically. Uh, arena foreground of the trolls. Arena foreground of the demons. Damaged walls. Okay. Dark way to the coven of mages. Yes, I want to save over that. Do I need the key for this? I need a red key. Okay. How many trolls and demons are going to be behind these walls? Quite a few. The demon arena. They're actually stuck behind this. <laughs> nah, nah. Did like Nemesis put them behind those? They can't do anything about it. Oh, there's actually a uh, key in there. I guess we should start destroying demons. Proto Doom guy that we are. I think I just blew up a whole bunch of those zappers over there. Let's uh try and lure them away from the loot. Let's uh. Try not to re release both of them at once. At once. That would be neat if they uh, had like infighting. I think that's expecting a bit much, though. Normally wouldn't mind playing this on a fairly difficult level. It seems like the major changes enemies have far more HP. This is the first time I'm playing through it, and I am playing through it on Warrior. Um, so I don't actually know the differences between uh, difficulties, but it would make sense if they have more HP. These demons are taking like 50 shots from my magic missile to deal with one of them, and it's kind of a lot. <laughs> Doesn't really make them more challenging, but... Okay, come around the corner and, uh... Light up! Come on, come all! There we go. <laughs> I was going to pick that up, but I, at the last moment I decided to shoot it for some reason. It's not like I can make use of these. They're just popping these bubbles. There we go. And we'll go down here. I think the main reason I chose to play on uh, Warrior difficulty is because with the source port I am using a mouse, which makes my reaction to being surrounded much faster than if I was using the keyboard where turn rate is a lot slower. So. 
like Doom's higher difficulties where there are more enemies rather than ones that are tanking to the point of being kind of tedious. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing which Wolfenstein 3D did. Uh, the higher difficulties, as well as having the enemies deal more damage, uh, adds a lot more enemies to maps uh, where they wouldn't be otherwise. So, rather than just giving them more health, which is what a lot of games did and still do, and it's not really the right answer to it. I mean, Skyrim does that, and you end up with, like, you know, bandits which have huge amounts of health and can just... You can fill their face full of arrows, and it's just... <sighs> it's more challenging, whether it's the right amount of it, more challenges. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, we actually had to clear out both of them. Okay. The Coven of Mages. Hey, look! They actually have portals, do they? Hmm. Chamber of five magic gates. Yeah, they have the gates. Neat. That was in the descent. Uh, does it say anything about them? Viewing. Nope. Where's this one go? Citadel of the Mages. Can I teleport back? Yes, I can. That's something I'll mention. If you play through the descent uh, with the source port, I didn't actually check the base game to see whether this is the case in the original game, but uh, one of the portals is a one way. And that means you end up in a uh, an area which you can't get back out of. So, something to keep in mind. I think it was in the... Oh, where was it? I can't remember. It was one of the areas attached to the Axis level. Oh, heck! Hello, you're at your enemy. You shoot fireball, uh, lightning bolts at me. It's just a giant eyeball. <laughs> and it goes splat when you kill it. That's neat and kind of creepy. I'm surprised you don't get like a nice little gory pile of eyeball on the ground when you kill it. Get out of here. Go. There's one game you love difficulty setting is, is Stalker. It increases damage from everything to everyone. Doing the highest difficulty means squishiest enemies, but you are also squishy. Stalker's difficulty and the conflicting information about them is confusing as hell. Still nice, even if it's not clear. I do like playing Stalker on the higher difficulties. Yeah, because of that. Um, it, really, it just means like you have to be really careful and aware of your surroundings. Um, and it feels fair because, like, the enemies are as vulnerable as you are. Unless you're playing some mods and the enemies can shoot you from across the map. Uh, <laughs> the misery mod is an acquired taste, and I don't have that taste. <laughs> Interesting experience, though. I should do a stream of Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl. Call of Pripyat's fun, too. Um, I think I've only finished Shadow of... Chernobyl once, and I did even get the good ending in it. Most of the other times I've played through it, it's just wandering around exploring the map. It's a very nice game to just, I suppose, lose yourself in looking around. You have yet to find mods or standard settings that allow you to really enjoy Stalker. It's, uh, yeah, it's rather janky. And, um, yeah, I don't know. What I like about it. I suppose it's the whole sort of searching around, looking for things, and surviving against the uh, mutants and so on. Which is neat. But that's sort of a very intermittent thing. A lot of the gameplay in Stalker is just sort of roaming around the levels, not really having anything happen. And then it's suddenly... There's a... Then suddenly it's ambush, and you're dealing with, like, eight bandits. And, um... Then it's sort of back to just quietly walking around the walking around the world. I think it's the atmosphere which carries Stalker a lot. The underground areas are really good though. Because it's all cramped tunnels with weird, powerful mutants in them, and you don't know what you're gonna come across. You like mods to make Stalker stable. 
I think The Lost Alpha is a good mod to uh, play. Mod, I think it's actually a standalone game now. You can download it without even having to own Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Um, that's pretty good. Some of the mods go and add a bit too much, though. They sort of try to fill in all these things which were not finished and... Vehicles were not something which was ever finished to a degree which were, were really functional. Anyway, what's this say? The evil ne nemesis lies beyond the tangled web of the mages. Okay. Anything else around here? Another eyeball? Went to stalk after playing Fallout 3 and it was default difficulty, so your brain kept making bad comparisons. Yeah, it's really not similar to Fallout 3. Um, Fallout 3 is a lot more RPG. Stalker is a lot more sort of just first-person shooters with survival. Um, you do get better loot and all that, but they don't really help you that much. Like, I think the best armor you can get is the... Uh, Power armor? Or power suit? It's like exoskeleton, that's it. And the benefit of that is really that you can carry more rather than survive more shots. You can survive more shots, but uh, it's like you can survive, say, five shots as opposed to three. And it's really expensive to get. And in the original one, you can't really repair items, so... Not necessarily better to wear than just, I don't know, normal leather armor or something. You need help to make for, what to make for dinner, noodles or meatballs? <laughs> Pork and all or dos. <laughs> spaghetti, and noodles, spaghetti and meatballs sounds great. I don't know. I, I like noodles. Um, spaghetti's nice. If you mean uh, spaghetti with noodles. Um, Unless it's like two minute noodles or something like that. Or I guess like rice noodles. It's got it should be noodles, not pasta. Okay, that's fine. That's the that's the same. Um, I think I mostly have noodles with stir-fry. It's just like vegetables and some like pork or beef cut up into it. I like meatballs though. I don't think I actually have meatballs that often. Uh... Okay, let's shoot each one of these. Just make sure there's no other hidden chambers behind them. Nothing there. Did I get something out of this other than seeing s eyeballs? I did get a scroll. Okay, I think that's probably it. We can come back if we need to. There's one eye closet that has a blank wall behind it. Mm, okay. Oh, I see what you mean. It doesn't have the uh, symbol on it. Yeah. Can I destroy that? No, it doesn't look like I can. Hmm. Maybe it just adjoins to a room. Yeah, maybe it just it just butts up against like. A room like this. Okay, that's one area. Uh, no. Let me save under another one. And go in here. I heard that. Yeah, I'll shoot you around that chest. Sub wall passages. Can I get anywhere from here? 
Shoot those. No. Okay, I guess that's just a back door. A back way. Let's go in here. <laughs> I just backed up into the portal. Let's drink a potion. Antechamber before the before the altar. I need a red key. Okay. No, oh, I guess that's the way we have to go. Okay. Uh. Hello, sir. There's a key. Is that the key I need? No, that requires a red key. Okay. The map actually shows you what type of key you need for the door. It puts like a, a colored square over the center of it. It's a bit difficult to see on that door, but it's got a red square over the top of it. Let's go through this one. The long passages of discipline. Ow! Hey, stop that! Okay. Yeah, I think that's about it. I was just looking for, like, any areas which could hold a secret area in the... Doesn't really look like it. Go through here. I think we had to go through this one? Yep. Okay. Shoot that. <laughs> Chamber of Final Prayers. Are you sure about that game? He does like himself a lot. He's got so many portraits of himself around. I don't even really know what Nemesis' big deal is. I guess he's terrorizing the countryside or something. Altar of the Seeing Eye. Well, it's not seeing anymore. Um, I can break that. Meditation chamber. I kind of wish they used the uh, door system a bit more. Um, like in the early levels, they had keys which you picked up to go through doors. But I mean, in um, in the uh, caves with all the skeletons in it, they actually had these little, like, darkened doorways which you would step through, and it would remove the wall when you stepped through it, uh, which worked rather well as a door. Uh, not having, you know, Wolfenstein 3D sort of sliding doors in this yet. Rather than having all these, like, secret walls you have to shoot to break open. Maybe it's because it's difficult to telegraph that you had to walk through a wall rather than shoot it. Uh, what am I doing around here? I have a yellow key. Oh, there we go. 
These walls are perpetually blowing up. Passage to the inner sanctum. I think we're getting close to the end of it. Use the yellow key. Arrived at the inner sanctum. The wall is yellow. The roof is green. Oh, it's uh, orange. And the walls are explosions. The first circle. Okay. The second circle. Ooh. Red demons. How many fireballs are you going to take? Maybe about the same as the blue ones? Kind of wish they'd gone for something a little bit different than a text than a uh, color swapped version of the demon. The red demons are the ones which we fought in the previous game, and the blue ones are the alternate. But uh, yeah, just maybe something which looked a bit more different would be nice. I have to go over here. Yeah. Ten. Yeah, I think they take about 50 shots again. The insufferable ways of pain. That just makes it sound like it's annoying more than anything else. Oh, this chamber is so annoying, so insufferable. <laughs> Can't stand it! In a sort of in a mild annoyance way, rather than being, oh god, this hurts so much. There we go. There's a door there. I need a yellow key. Okay. Place of the Keeper of Keys. I'd have to find one of each type of key to be able to advance. There we go. Uh, do I go through here? Green key. Get. There we go. You're gonna make me use up half of my zappers.
die. There we go. What's our reward? Potions, which I don't need. All the zappers back, which I used up. Or so maybe not all of them back. Enter chamber to the haunt. Where do you come from? Pfft. Ah. Hey, how did you move through him? Oh, I got. <laughs> I picked up an hourglass. I was like, why did my fireball stop? Yeah, we get to see there is no actually. There is no back sprite on these. There's only ones when they're facing you. Ugh. <sighs> it's a neat mechanic, I really like it. Bram. <laughs> More demons? Yep. There's another hourglass back there. The Chamber of Ultimate Doom. Like, I could use all these zappers, but I don't think. Yeah. Like, I used the zapper there, but it's not launching any more fireballs, so you hit the maximum number of fireballs and that's it. There's no point using any more. So there is, like, a max number of damage amount of damage which you could deal with a uh, hourglass. I feel like it's easier not to use them in that regard. If you're going for just, like, sheer efficiency. <laughs> As opposed to style. The nukes certainly helped there with dealing with those mages. There's actually a red key there. Nothing else I could destroy around there? Nope. Okay. Uh. Where are we? We're over here. Hang on. Oh, I can't see myself because we're a yellow arrow on this and the floor's yellow. Okay. Uh, that requires a yellow key, but I don't have that. Did I not pick up a yellow key? Oh no, I did have a yellow key. I must have been looking at the green key in my inventory.
Get out of here. Okay, save. Antechamber to the haunt of Nemesis. Yes, I want to pass. You have arrived at the haunt of Nemesis. Hey, it looks different. He's got statues of himself here now. <laughs> Okay. The personal haunt of Nemesis. That is a lot of mages. That's a little bit more like it. Like a lot of fireballs everywhere. You can't actually see their fireballs when they fire them on the uh, auto map. I can only see mine. I do think some of the enemies could have had alternate attacks to mix things up a little bit. Oop. At least they're not demons. You're just poking around a catacomb to descent. It was infinitely easier to play and more fun than it would have been without it. I enjoyed my playthrough of it. It was a, it was what like twenty levels, which was about as long as I could stand for it. Um, the gameplay, you know, did outlive its welcome for that makes of time. As I said earlier, I rather liked the uh, non-linearity of some of the levels in that game. I wish this level, this uh, game, had done a bit of that. Would it be neat to have, like, being able to go back and forth between some areas and take alternate paths? Even though the descent um, doesn't remember the state of the level was in when you leave it and come back to it, it's just loading the level fresh over again. Um, so you can get infinite resources that way if you wished, but. It's a neat idea, and I kind of wish this did that. I wonder if the later ones will. You can see on the audio map, we're just exploding in fireballs every now and then. Come on, I'm whittling your health down, slowly. There we go. Yeah, let's go up and have a look in that room where they were. Any more? Nope. Actually, yes. There we go. Hey, it's Nemesis. He was hiding behind the wall the whole time. Hey, he's firing, he's firing flaming skulls, his own flaming skull at me. There. How much damage does he deal in one hit? Oh, 
Okay, it's like uh, 25 hit points. That's respectable. Ow. Come on. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> His head explodes again and we get a key. As the boss, he's a little bit, you know, compared to the demons. He does have an attack, powerful attack. Again, though, it's probably harder to deal with the uh, keyboard. Anyway, pass this way. Yep, the way back to the surface. You've arrived at the passage to the surface. Okay. Oh, I think our job is done. We can uh, head back home now. Having beaten Nemesis again. The Hall of Fallen Foes. Oh, it's got all the, like, statues of the different enemies. You got the uh, wizards there, zombies, the eyeballs, the orcs, skeletons, the little ghost thingies, I guess. Like shadows, orcs, nemesis, uh, not orcs, this is a uh, troll. Nemesis and the demons. Oh, I have to go this way. There we go. The way out. Did it say anything else on the ground? No. A request of you. Are you up to do some more adventuring? Let us know at 1 800 831 2694. Or write to us at 606 Common Street, Shreveport, LA, 71101. Thanks! Your latest victory over Nemesis surpasses your previous feats and foreshadows your next challenge. The Catacomb Armageddon is nigh at hand. The victor's glory spot. Your victory over Nemesis shall be told to all. Yeah, we even get a little landscape out there. The way home at last. There we go. You have emerged from the Catacomb Abyss as a conqueror and valiant warrior. Yay! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Well done. You've done good. We did get a little victory, like a little victory hall at the end there. That was neat. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it was like two and a half hours to play through that. Again, that's uh, you know, about as much as I could have stand stood for that. Um, it's an improvement over uh the descent. I think uh, for the most part, graphics are better. Um. I like the HUD. It's got a bit more colour to it. The Descent! You really could sort of tell that it's really sort of just slapped together to show off the engine more than anything else, whereas this has got more, you know, let's actually, like, make a... a, a, a nice sort of a game to go along with it. Um, mechanically, they're very similar. Uh, this does have a few extra things which I like. Um, the skeletons emerging out of the walls. That was cool. The zombies and how they popped up out of the ground was neat. Um, and you had in that aqueduct level the uh, water trolls, which sort of popped up out of the water, or at least it looked like they did that. Um, that was cool too. Um, animated walls were... Uh, the animated textures on walls was a neat thing to see. Um, the first level with the flashing skies to make it look like there was lightning striking was, uh, neat. I still feel like there were some things which could have been improved a bit. Zappers and nukes. Like, okay, zappers are useful because you fire a volley of ten fireballs quickly. Um, but you could get that fire rate at yourself if you just mashed a button fast enough. And I don't think they deal more damage. It's just fire ten shots without having to, you know press the button 10 times i feel like zappers and nukes could have dealt more damage especially the nuke it fires a you know a, a circle of fireballs around you uh useful if you get surrounded but i think if you get surrounded 
Like early on, the enemies are not that common and they die easy enough that you don't really need to use a nuke on them. And later on, the enemies, at least a warrior difficulty, which does skew things probably a bit too far in this direction, have too much health to really warrant using a nuke on them because what you're going to have to use, like, if a nuke deals, if a nuke fireball deals as much damage as a normal fireball or magic missile, then I'd have to use, like, 50 nukes to be able to kill one uh demon probably less because it does fire a close cluster of fireballs so chances are the demon is going to get hit by at least like two to three fireballs but that's still like 25 or something nukes to defeat one demon and eh. it's just easier to back up and shoot at them or and use the uh, zappers because you're always going to be like Kiting them around, not really getting surrounded. So yeah, I mean you know, this is still you know a, a, a interest a, a fun game, and I understand to a degree these criticisms are a bit unfair because this was like one of the first first person shooters made, so <laughs> they're not going to be, you know. They're going to be learning things as they go along. Um, but I still think, I think it's valid to have some criticisms of the game. It's not perfect. And there are ways which they could have improved upon it with hindsight. It's not an enjoyable game enough as it is. It didn't have as many puzzles as I thought it did. Like the first level it had, um, you know, I'll go into this area and you can find the key. Um... Even the first scroll which we picked up was like, you know, hey, have a look at this area. But after that, these scrolls were really just sort of explaining like, you know, oh, this area has got mages in it, or prepare for the dangers which lie ahead. They didn't really have much of the, uh, I thought they were going to be more, you know, oh, this area has a puzzle in it. Here's a riddle which you have to sort out. Even if the riddles are really just find the key, use the key on the door. It did have as many, um... Like, pick up the key, go through the door uh, to access a new part of the level, as I thought it would. Often the keys were sort of just, like, find two keys and then you have to go through two doors to get to the exit. Or you have to go through a door to get to the exit door, which requires a key to go through anyway, so. Not like in Wolfenstein 3D, where the level design was often, you would find one key, it would open up the next part of the level, then you'd find the next key, and it would open up, like, the final part of the level. It would sort of layer, layer the level in that way. The gems were interesting for the um, auto map. Honestly, I wasn't looking at the auto map that much. I couldn't really tell the difference. I think the gems make different enemies visible in the auto map. Um... So it's good to find them if you want to use the auto map. Just so you know if there's an enemy coming up behind you. So you don't get surrounded. But yeah, no, it's a good game. Aside from the, uh, you know, flaws from it being an early first person shooter. And there's two more in this too. There's uh, Armageddon and Apocalypse, which I will probably play through at some point. I think they're about the same length as this. I can't imagine they're too different from this. Uh, but, yeah, I'll probably play through them at some point. Anyway, fare thee well. That was uh, Catacombs the Abyss. That was, uh, yeah, what, like two and a half hours. That's fine. I hope, Thank you very much for joining. I hope you join me when we uh, when you're playing through the other ones at some point.